stand and sing with us come thy fount of every blessing so 169 come thy fount Fixed up on. 
good singing tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Brother Tom Googe is coming to lead our prayer. Let's pray together. Father, we have much to thank you for and we do thank you. We praise your name. Lord, we th thank you and praise you for this privilege tonight. And it is a privilege to meet with others, Lord, and worship you, hear your word, and, Lord, the sweet fellowship we enjoy together. But, oh, God, help us to never forget there are still souls out there, Father, that's not saved. Uh, and, Lord, help us to be faithful to tell them about your love and mercy. And, Father, you will save them if they'll let you. I pray for the one that brings the message tonight, Father. You know that need, and I believe, Lord, you'll su supply that need. And, Father, above all things, you've got every one of us in such a way, Lord, that the world can see that we're yours. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Choir, you can be seated as well. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> We talk a lot of times and read a lot of time about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Boy, there's a lot of songs written about that. And uh, we've got a lot to thank people for that had the knowledge and everything to write them. I'm going to sing a couple of verses tonight and play one on the heart. But the blood that stained the old rugged cross. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Praise God forever. I think sometimes folks really forget what it means that Christ shed his blood on the cross for you and me. Amen. On the cross of Calvary, where our blessed Savior died, gave his life to save the world from loss. And in his pain and agony, for every sin to hide, shed the blood that stained the old rugged cross. Amen. Was his blood, his precious blood, that stained the old rugged cross? Was his love that paid the awful cross? And was soul so far astray? Come and plunge today Amen. in the blood that stained the old rugged cross. Amen. <laughs> of that. Whoever wrote those, of course you can see his name there, surely had something inside, didn't he? Amen. Somebody could write something like that about our God. Had to be a saved person. 
What an awful death he died to pardon you and me. All alone in agony he tossed him, and a world once lost in sin can now be wholly free. For the blood that stained the old rugged cross was his blood, his precious blood, that stained the old rugged cross. T'was his love that paid the awful cost. O soul so far astray, come and plunge today in the blood Amen. that stained the old rugged cross. Praise God forever. <laughs> my, 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 what something is wonderful in it. <laughs>
Okay, we have a chorus for this one, 439. Let's stand and sing that one, if you would. The windows of heaven are open. Is it 203? Okay, I'm sorry. Looking. Oh, we got another congregational song here. Here's okay. what we're going to do. <laughs> I should have told Brother Harvey. When the rain started this afternoon, I said, we're thankful. Are you thankful for the rain? <clears throat> so I thought of the windows of heaven are open. So that's page 203. It's only a chorus, so we're going to stand together and sing page 203. After we sing page 203, we're going to sing page 439, count your blessings, okay? okay. So y'all stay here till we sing 439, <laughs> all right? 203, let's stand together okay. and sing. <laughs> didn't say my, I gave him an old tattered garmin. <laughs> so I want you to sing it right this time, old tattered garment. You see that? So let's sing it one more time, all right? The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything Okay, we'll try 439 now. 439. <coughs> when upon life's billows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, angels.
fellowship tonight. I want you to tell somebody something God done for you, all right? Tell somebody something God done for you. Thank you for being here tonight. I appreciate you coming. And once again, I'm thankful for the rain, aren't you? We needed that. We sure did. How many of you know what these are? Okay, they're not prayer cloths. Okay, so <laughs> like that. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> Inside the little card, you know, all that. If you did not get one this morning, but you need one tonight before you leave, it doesn't have to be just one per family. Husband and wife can both take one. If you didn't get one, Brother H.B. wants to bring you one. So if you'll raise your hand, he'll take, bring it to you. If you did not get one, but you'll want one. Okay, quarter a day. All right. We had the $91.25 a year. That's not, yeah, we can, okay. Okay. Let's go, HB. We can get all night. Come on, okay? <laughs> Let's go, HB. Come on. <laughs> Somebody put your hand up over here, so you don't have to run over here. Somebody, okay? <clears throat> No, he's, HB's going to do it. I'm going to make him do it. I don't care. Go sit down, Dwayne. It's about time he did something around here. Wouldn't you all say so? <laughs> he's about out. Good. You can help us a quarter a day for one year. Okay. Okay. He's, he's over here now. If somebody on this hand didn't get one, raise your hand over here. Uh, Mr. Sexton, the middle section here. <laughs> James Sexton in the middle section needs one. I got some more right here. Come and get them. <laughs> no, just one, so I'm going to give you it. <laughs> right back in the middle section right here. <laughs> well, right, you said give that one first. <laughs> here, HB. <laughs> Is that mean of me? I like being mean, no. Okay, Brother Copeland, if you'll come up here now. Where's Brother Terry at? I'd like to get rid of all those tonight if we could. That'd mean we gave out 350 today. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Tell us about the two people that got saved this morning. Well, this morning was myself and Mrs. Wall's opportunity and time to be in junior church. We had uh, two first-time visitors today that were coming on the buses, a uh, young lady and young man. They were brothers and sister, and both of them got saved this morning, so that was great. We had a, had a great morning of, 
upstairs. The numbers were down, and we was kind of sad about that, but we was glad about the two being saved. So, thank you. Amen. There was one saved at jail yesterday. Who led that person to the Lord yesterday at jail? Brother Leon, come tell us about it. Leon's preached two times at jail, folks. That, that's unusual for him to say, that's good. Oh, well, I didn't expect this. The preacher to really put you on the spot, can he? Well, uh, Jonathan preached. The Lord spoke to this young man's heart, and he came to the Lord. That's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, Nathan, they were some saved at the Bible. We had a good lock in Friday night at nine o'clock. We all got there kind of at nine, and then they kind of come in a little bit later than that. We had a couple uh, young men preach. Jason Stiltner and Craig Price preached for us, and they preached four times. And uh, one of them preached at 3.30 in the morning, one of them preached at uh, 1.30, and different other times. And uh, we had six teenagers that got saved, and uh, it was a blessing. We had 51 kids there all night long, and uh, it was, well, not all night, some left, but f for the most part, we had 51, and we thank the Lord for that, and uh, six teenagers got saved. Amen. On our last two youth activities, Daniel Copeland ended up in the hospital. My daughter ended up in the hospital. Kim Burge ended up in the hospital. So the next youth activity, we're going to play checkers and pull taffy <laughs> for the next youth activities. Amen. <laughs> so we're going to do. All right, Brother Price. Okay, if we can get our young men to come, we'll go ahead and receive the offering this evening. Archie Raby, come up and pray for us, would you please? Let's pray. Oh, Lord, thank you for this day, and thank you for this beautiful day, and thank you for the rain. Help Pastor Wallace, he comes tonight, give him the words you want him to say, and bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Archie. May the Lord bless us as we give tonight. children have some money they want to place in their mission offering they can do so at this time and kids if you have a verse you're going to say or a song you're going to sing just stay up here and we'll let you do that now so
That's a beautiful job. All right, you ready? I love Jesus, does he know? Do I ever tell him so? Jesus loves to hear me say that I love him every day. Yes, I love Jesus. Yes, I love Jesus. Yes, I love Jesus because he first loved me. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings, 1st, 2nd Chronicles, Zezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Malachi, Zechariah, Malachi. That's good. <laughs> that was good. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves the little children, all the little children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious and say, Jesus loves the little children of the world. Amen. Give thanks unto the name of the Lord, Psalm 108. One. Amen. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, for whosoever believes in Him should not perish for everlasting life. Amen. Genesis one one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. <laughs> Make a joyful noise to the Lord and all ye lands. Amen. That's good. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st, 6th Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings, 1st, 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Beckett, Zephna, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st, 2nd Thessalonians, 1st, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd, 3rd John, June, Revelations. Amen. Be a belly, it's a for me. I stand up on the oh, they got the be a bear, I'll be Bible. Amen. <laughs> Rejoice evermore. Amen. Let's give them a big hand tonight. <laughs> Children may go downstairs to their class, and Chad, you can go as well, okay. <laughs> Just before the message by Pastor Walls, Craig Price and Leah Totten come to sing, Be Still and Know. Still a restless soul 
the mind Bow before the Prince of Peace Let the noise and clamor cease Be still and know that He is God Be still and know that He is faithful chapter 4, I encourage you to get you a pencil and piece of paper, please. Something to take notes with. I think I'll say two or three things tonight that could really, could really be a help to you. I'm serious. I'm, I try to every service. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9, if you're First Chronicles, not Corinthians, but Chronicles in the Old Testament, First Chronicles chapter 4. Verse number 9. If you're able to stand with me, I want you to. If you cannot, you can remain seated. But 1 Chronicles 4, 9. If you don't have a Bible, if you'll listen closely, or if you'll look off with someone, it would be a blessing. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, O oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Father, I say ditto to the prayer of Jabez for my life tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Be seated, please. A few days ago, Ruth Out of Justice gave me a little book entitled The Prayer of Jabez. Have you, have you read the book yet? The Prayer of Jabez? One person, two people, three, four, five, okay, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, that's a good group of people, of this crowd of people. Read the book, The Prayer of Jabez. It's a very, very short book. But before I finish the book, I knew I'd have to give you some things that I learned from The Prayer of Jabez. I've been blessed and helped so many times already through just practicing this prayer for myself. I cannot tell you how many answers to prayers I've had 
in the last 10 days. I cannot tell how many answers to prayers I've had. I mean, direct answers to prayer, almost uh, as quick as I'd pray it, that God would say, okay, there. And I would, wouldn't want, don't want to tell you because I don't want you to sound like I'm bragging on it, but I'm just telling you that there's, I believe, a certain blessing that goes with the prayer of Jabez that can be a blessing in your life. Now, let me just mention some things, some things, and I'll try to be brief tonight, but I want to try to cover everything I can. First of all, is why is his name here? Have you ever made decision you're going to read the Word of God through? And you start reading it through, and you come to First Chronicles. And you run into all those names, and it becomes disheartening, doesn't it? I have no idea who any of these people are. I'm sure if I were to read their names out loud and they were in the audience, they'd never even respond. That's how bad I would be with the pronunciation of the names of all these people. But there's a reason that God has their names here. It's, it's a reason that God wants to tell us something. Right here, right, just like a, you're reading along, all of a sudden it's like a phone book comes up in front of you. Just the numbers aren't there, just the names. And, uh, but don't, before you despair, though, take courage, ladies and gentlemen, that this is a reminder to you and I, all these names are, that God is a God that's not impersonal, but a God who knows his people by name. He said in John chapter 10, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. So let me ask, listen, when you get to heaven one of these days, and we walk down the streets of glory, and we're shouting and praising the Lord, and uh, we're walking down the streets of glory, we're having a good time rejoicing in God, and all of a sudden, and I know gee, we're going to see Jesus first, I believe that with my heart, we'll see him first, he'll be the first thing we'll see. But you're walking up, and you're going to talk with Jesus for the first time, he'll say, oh, by the way, uh, what is your name? That's never going to happen. Because from the time God saved you, he wrote your name down in glory, Amen. <laughs> There's a verse of scripture that I love. I love this verse. I've got many of them, but this one in particular just is a blessing to me. Is Isaiah 49, verses 15 and 16. Now there's many things it says, but one thing it says this. Listen to what God said. God said, I have engraven thee upon the palms of my hands. God said, and not only is my name written down in heaven, but God said, I've engraved thee upon the palms of my hand. And when God looks at his palms of his hands, that God be able to see me. He keeps me in the palm of his hand. My name's in the palm of his hands. My name's in the Lamb's book of life. I know that. His name is here because God wants to know you. I know my sheep. Remember he called Lazarus by name and others by name. Okay, so he knows you. And then the second thing I want to say is what's this story about? Well, this story is about a guy that we would call him an underdog that came out on top. All of us like pulling for underdogs, don't we? That's why I like Tennessee men's basketball. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Always pulling for the underdogs. Uh, but, and you all, everybody likes to hear the story about, somebody, there's an old saying, you give somebody a lemon and they make what? Lemonade. You like those stories. I, I rejoice in those stories. I enjoy reading those stories. But Jabez is a man with a problem. Look what the Bible says about him in verse number nine. He said, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren... And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. Uh, in other words, here, when people gave people names in the Old Testament times, their name meant something. And when, you said, when they said Jabez, it meant he's a man of sorrows. He's a person that's caused some sorrow or heartache to his mother, and that's why she's called him that. Now, this is unusual because we know that women, particularly, or women, the bearing of the children in the Old Testament was supposed to be, especially if a man child was born, a great delight to them because they were hoping that that person would be the Messiah. They'd be the one that would be the one where Christ would come, be the one which the Messiah would come. But jo Jabez started out wrong. He got a bad name to start with, son of Sarah. He was an unwanted child. No doubt, perhaps, if he'd been conceived in our day, he'd been aborted because he was not sought for, but one of sorrow. He had one strike against him before he ever came out of the cradle. He had one strike already against him before he was ever born into this world. And But Jabez became an overcomer, and the Bible says he was more honorable than his brethren, and there must have been some reason why he did so. Now, I'm, again, I'm going to try to be brief, but I want to show you some things. First of all, I believe he found an answer to his problem in the Bible. 
Many of our problems in life are solved because we find an answer in the Word of God for us. Do you remember with me? Let me tell you what I think Jabez found out. Look in Genesis 35, verse 18 with me for a second. Genesis 5, 35, 18. This wasn't in, some of these things are not in the little book you gave me. It's other things I've discovered and come up with. Genesis 35, verse 18. Genesis 35, 18. Are you there? If you are, say amen. amen. It came to pass as her soul was departing, for she died. This is, this is Rachel bearing a child. The Bible says, for she died, that she called his, what she called his name? Meona. Look what that means. In, do you all any of you have a Schofield Bible? Do you notice the reference that says D there? You see what D means? What does D, what does it say D down the middle section? Son of Sarah. So when Rachel was dying, she gave birth to a son, and she called him what? Son of Sarah. But I want you to look what his father called him. His father called him what? Benjamin, and that means son of my right hand. Listen to me just for a second. Rachel was so beloved of Jacob. He would have done anything in the world for that woman. He worked for her for 14 years, remember, just to marry her. Remember how he loved her and how he cared for her, how he prayed for her? He'd done anything for her. But he would not grant her her dying wish. She said, you call him son of Sarah. She said, no. He said, no, I'm going to call him son of my right hand. And because I believe that through this process of time that the father knew that naming the son, Jacob knew naming this boy meant something. Because you remember, Jacob had a name. Jacob was called trickster and subplanter, and that's the way he lived his life, was what he was called, was the way he lived. But one day, God met Jacob one night in a wrestling match, remember? And God did what? Changed his name. And you know the prayer that he prayed when God changed his name? He changed his name. When he changed his name, he changed his name to Israel. And you know what he asked for? Listen to me now. When God changed the name of Jacob, he said, God bless me, God bless me, and keep me. And Jabez said, God bless me, the Lord bless me indeed. Look with me, verse number 9 again. Notice, do what? Bless me indeed. So he found out the answer to the Bible, that even though he got a bad start, you can get a fresh start with God. Amen? Did you get a fresh start with God when God saved you? Do you still get fresh starts with God when God has to forgive you? Amen. I learned that from Jabez's prayer. The second thing I learned from Jabez's prayer is this, that his problems drove him to his knees. He prayed. I read, I heard this statement the other day, and I'm going to preach a whole sermon on one of these Sundays, I believe. And it's a tremendous statement. I, want you to, I wish I had time tonight to preach about it, but I don't. Listen to this statement. Are you ready? You've got to write this down. If you haven't, if you haven't seen this yet, you've got to write this down. Listen, are you ready? When things go wrong, don't go with them. Is that good? When things go wrong, don't go with them. Well, that's, is that powerful? I saw that some other day. I'm not even sure where I saw it. When things go wrong, Things go wrong in your marriage, you don't have to go wrong. Come on. Things go wrong on the job, you don't have to go wrong. When things go wrong anywhere else, you don't have to go wrong. So the problems, though, no matter. Listen, problems can be a blessing if those problems draw you closer to God and bring you into his, in his presence. Thus the presence of God with Jabez, because Jabez began to pray and call upon the name of the Lord. I will make a statement. I want you to listen to me now, and I want you to hear this next few statements. Number one, listen closely about this now. That's just some introduction. I want you to hear this. You're not going to hear many preachers say this that are Baptist preachers. You ready? It is not wrong for you to pray for God to bless you personally. Sometimes we as Christians think, well, if I ask God to bless me personally, I'm being selfish. Did you look in his prayer? Look how many times he uses me. Just let's look at it one more time. Verse number 10. He said, He called on the name of the Lord, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and, and that thy hand might be with and that thou wouldest keep me that may not grieve. Is, is he praying for himself? Answer me. 
So it's not wrong for you in some thing, in, in many areas of your life to pray for God to bless you. Now listen to me. There's a reason for that. You know the reason I pray for God to bless me? So I can bless you. I want to tell you something. If it don't bless you, it ain't going to bless nobody else. Amen? And if it's not going to help you, it's not going to help anybody else. So it's not wrong for you to pray for the blessings of God upon your life. Now God's blessings may be riches, but it may be poverty. It may be health, or it may be sickness. We don't know for sure. But he said, James Best could have said, Lord, I haven't been a blessing to anybody. I'm a son of sorrow. My birth has even brought sorrow to my mother. And he said, Lord, I want to be a blessing to people. He said, God, I want you to bless me and bless me indeed. I like those who've become a blessing to others. You need to get somewhere tonight and pray. Say, God, bless me and bless me indeed. Strangest thing happened. I have plenty of opportunities to preach. And I take more than I should, probably. Because it's so tiresome anymore to travel, honestly, and to preach and try to take care of everything. And the good people we have here that work in for us to take care of things, and I'm not around, it's such a wonderful blessing to have those people. We're fortunate to have those people working for us. It would be a good place for you to say amen. Encourage them. We are. Now, the other day, just a passing thought came to me. I'm serious. And I said this to God, and just and after I'd read this chapter thing, and I guess I was going to see if it would work. You know what I'm saying? You ever just read something? What if that'll work? <laughs> you know, like the mother-in-law standing with her son-in-law next to a wishing well, and she held in, fell in head first. He said, "I didn't know that worked." But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Dear Lord, have that pastor to ask me to preach for him." But you believe three days later. I want you to come preach for me. That's pretty quick. My family today at lunchtime, we prayed. Now, here's what we prayed. We said, Dear Lord, I was going to come to church. I was going to come to church tonight and I was going to ask you to pray for rain. At our dinner table today, we had a prayer. Andrew led in prayer. I don't think God heard his prayer, but we led, he led in prayer. <laughs> And he said, dear Lord, we, ask, we join hands. And my wife said, won't we pray for prayer? We, uh, we pray for prayer, yeah. We pray for rain. Did you pray for rain today? Aren't you, look what God, you said, well, just an, just an uh, coincidence. There was nothing, in, there was none predicted. It wasn't supposed to have any for another three or four days. Say what you want to. You can call it coincidence. I call it God answering prayer. And I'm on the light in it. Make me a blessing. Not wrong to pray for yourself. Here's the third thing. He asked God for more responsibilities. He said, God, I want you to enlarge my book. Is that what he said? Tell me, is that what he said? He asked God for more responsibility. Most of us say we have all we can handle already. But you know that every time God goes to use someone in the Bible, it's already someone that's busy. When Jacob and his our brothers moved down to Joseph down in Egypt, and Pharaoh said, I want someone to help me govern the land. You know who he said Joseph to look for? He said, pick out men of activity. You get people that are busy to do things. Don't you? If you want something done, get someone busy to do it. Because see, God is looking for people that are doing things. And Jabez said, well, I'm sick and tired of being just a, a nominal person. I'm sick and tired of just, uh, uh, just going around in circles. I'm sick and tired of not accomplishing any more for you. And I'm not satisfied where I am. And Lord, I want my life to count for you more hey I'm not satisfied folks now I'm satisfied with Jesus but I want more I want, I want, to, I want to enlarge my coast amen. amen I want to do more for God I'm serious I do you say well it's going to be more work for you fine I want to do more for God don't you want to see more people saved sure you do don't you want to see the church do better, grow more? I'm serious, because the more people you reach, the more souls your son will keep out of hell. Now, what's interesting, now this is good, this, was a, this is something a little extra here. What's interesting, when he said, enlarge my coast, if you remember that all the Israel pe Israelite people had sections assigned to them, right? Like this part belonged to you, that part belonged to you, this part belonged to me. So, now, and if you got in trouble, I would bail you out. 
I'd pay your taxes, I'd help you, but at the end of Jubilee, I'd give it all back to you. And you start over where you were, where you were some years ago. So how in the world then could an Israelite enlarge his coast? Because he'd have to give it back. The reason he way enlarge his coast, he'd go over the devil's territory, the Philistines' territory, and take the territory from the, from the devil. If you want God to enlarge your coast, some things you've been giving the devil, you take away from him. You've been giving the devil some of your good time, why don't you take it back from him? You've been giving the devil some of your prayer time. Why don't you get it back from you? You've been giving the devil some of your money. Some of your talents. Why don't you get it back from him? That's how you, he enlarges your borders. Give me more to do. That was his prayer. Boy, I'll tell you what, you won't find many Christians praying that prayer. Here's the next thing I learned about him. He realized unless God's hand was upon him, he couldn't accomplish anything. Look what he said in verse number 10. He said that thy hand might be what? with me. We do many things with our hands, don't we? We hold hands, don't we? Sweethearts hold hands. Married couples hold hands. We hold people's hands in time of sorrow and sickness. But if it wasn't for God's hand upon us, we would accomplish nothing. So what you need to pray is this prayer, God, not only listen to me now, God, I want you to listen, listen. I want you to say it with me. I want you to bless me indeed. Say it with me. I want you to bless me indeed. I want you to enlarge my coast. I want you to enlarge my coast. But while you're doing that, I want you to put your hand upon me. See, because if God puts his hand upon you, when he enlarges your coast, he gives you power to do it. You see the process? Okay, here's the prayer I've been praying. Lord, bless me indeed. Bless me. Lord, enlarge my coast. God, don't you enlarge it unless you're going to put your hand upon me to do it. You got that? Let me give you two or three more things. And then he says, dear Lord, look at the verse again. He said, thou wouldest keep me from evil. Now, he didn't pray for God to keep him through evil, though God does, but to keep him from evil. God, help my eyes not to see what you don't want them to see. Help my tongue not to say what you don't want me to say. Help my ears not to hear what you want me to hear. Keep me from evil. Keep me from evil. Boy, it's hard in the world we live in, is it not? All that's going on, all the junk and garbage. And uh, there's just two other things. I'll mention them, and then I'll be through tonight, and I'm going to pray. He says, I want us, that, 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 look what he said, I'm sorry, that, that would just keep me from evil. Read me the last part of, that, of this, this section, that it would what? May not, may not grieve me. I'm going to tell you, and you know it's true, folks, and I don't need to sit up here and hit the desk, stomp my foot, and foam at the mouth. But I do need to tell you this that evil will grieve you. Hmm? You get crossways with God and see what happens to you. You get listen to the devil and see what happens to you. Evil will grieve you. Here's the last thing. Tell you what he found out in his prayer? He found out that God answers prayer. Did he not? He said, and God did what? That which he requested. And we learned that God rewards faith. He was more honorable than them all. Here's what I want to encourage you to do. I want to encourage you to practice this prayer. I want you, I've, I've been doing this. I mean, I've been doing it. I want, here's what I want you to do. I want you to say, Lord, I want you to bless me indeed. Lord, I want you to enlarge my coast. I want you, Lord... If you enlarge my coast, put your hand upon me. Lord, I want you to keep me from evil. And just let me say this to you. <clears throat> Everybody goes through times of sorrow. Don't you? Amen. Don't abandon prayer. God bless me indeed. God grant me, give me more to do for you. God let your hand be upon me. God keep me from evil. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I want, listen, I believe I'd get you to pray that prayer and believe that prayer. I think you'd see a difference in your life, in your home, your business, and everywhere. It's not wrong for you to pray selfishly. God bless me and bless me indeed. Here's the invitation I'm going to give tonight. It's going to be a broad one. Let's have a sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. That's all right, Brother Harvey. Sweet hour of prayer, they can play a part. Sweet hour of prayer, that calls me from a world of care. Bids me at my Father's throne. Make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul is often found relief by thy return. Sweet hour of prayer. 
If you need tonight, first of all, to pray for yourself, something you want God to bless you and bless you indeed with, maybe God, God's laid on your heart. I want you to slip out of your seat, and I want you to come somewhere, get over in a corner somewhere, get on one of these benches and sit if you have to, but you ask God to bless you and bless you indeed. Maybe you want to come tonight and you need to pray, and I think it's important we do so. God, enlarge my coast. God, put your hand upon me. I'm going to be here praying with you. Perhaps tonight there's someone, you've got a lost person you want to pray for, or a family member. You've got a problem you're going through. You're, you've got one of your loved ones that are sick. You've got somebody. I believe you pray for those things. You understand me? I believe you've got a problem you're facing. You need God's help with. I believe if you're sick physically, you ought to ask God to help you. I just believe you ought to do those things. Would you please now, while they're playing for us, you respond to that pleading that God says of Jabez's prayer in your heart, sweet hour of prayer. You slip out of your seat somewhere. You come. Now, I know you can pray at your seat, but there's something just about publicly of coming as if to say, God, by faith, I'm going to believe you and trust you for this. I believe it's an act of faith of us saying, God, I'm going to trust you and I'm going to believe you for this. I'm going to ask you to do this for me in your name, in the name of your son. tonight you need to know Christ is your Savior haven't been saved but you need to be saved we want to help you do that if you're here tonight and you need to get baptized it's not a time to get baptized this is the church family you'll be a part of why don't you do that tonight you make public you say we're going to sing one verse the first verse of that song we need to come do something about you come okay just for a second. Jonathan and Susan Smith and their children have been with us almost, has it been a year? Almost 18 months? Are you serious? 
It doesn't seem that long, honestly. But uh, Jonathan had some unfinished business. He felt like he needed to do it at school. And he and Susan and their g girls are going to be moving to Texas to go to Bible school. Be leaving at the end of this, uh, end of May, close to May. And they want you to pray for them. I mean, it's hard for a man his age, <laughs> nothing wrong with his age, but taking four kids and going to Bible school and working and taking classes, it's very difficult. Would you do, would, by the good grace of God, would you do your best to pray for Jonathan, Susan, and their family? We'll have their, all the girls' names in the bulletin next week so they can pray for them too. All right, but I want you to do that. And uh, we'll start to do that. May God bless you. you have, of course, we've talked with it. You have my blessings. I hope God uses you. It does a good thing. I want to thank you for the bus routes you run in Wartburg, for having at the school, the sign language. Thank you so much. And for the jail ministry that you do the visitation. It's got, it's got it started there. Brother Jerry's been going. Brother Roger's been going. Brother Leon's been going. And they'll carry on. But we appreciate uh, what you did. I mean that. The bus routes and things. All right, we need about five minutes of your time before we leave. We told you Wednesday night we need to have just a short business meeting. We're not going to vote on anything. This is to inform you about some things that you need to know about, okay, about our, our money, our buildings, and all those things. Just want to and just take a few minutes.